All right. Here we go. Transcripts. People of the state of New York versus Johnny Bunting. Arthur Austin, resident of Bronx County, called as a witness by and on behalf of the people. You wasn't my witness, boy. You for the people. Having been first duly sworn by the clerk of the court was examined and testified as follows. Establish him as a liar saying he testified for me behalf of the people, the court, you may inquire, saying, go ahead and question him. Question that bird, rat. Direct examination by Mr. Kelly. Good afternoon, Mr. Austin. Good afternoon, Mr. Austin. You still have to keep your voice up. I'm not gonna do the little chick voice for him real loud, so everybody right back to this gentleman with the glasses can hear you. Can you do that for us? Yes. What is your full name? Now, if you compare this with the last time I read it, you see nothing changed, but you, now you can see it. Austin People Direct means he testified for the people. Arthur D. Austin. Mr. Austin, where do you live? 1132 East 229th Street, East 229th, Laconia. I know it's difficult, but you will have to keep your voice up so everybody can hear you, okay? I want draw your attention to June 1st of 1989. Do you recall where you were approximately at 6 o'clock in the morning? Yes, and where were you? Baychester Avenue in the Bronx. I am sorry. Baychester Avenue in the Bronx. And could you tell the jury exactly where you were? on Baychester Avenue in the Bronx. Were you on the street? No, I was in a car. Okay, what kind of car were you in? A Honda Accord. What color was this Honda Accord? Blue. Do you know whose Honda Accord you were in? Yes. Whose was it? Johnny Bunting. Could you tell the jury who was in the car other then yourself, me, myself, a girl, Dennis, and Johnny. Dennis and Johnny. Do you know Dennis' last name? No, I don't. Do you know Dennis by any other name than Dennis? Yes. What do you know him as? Bandit. I am sorry. Bandit. And Johnny. Do you know Johnny by another name? Yes. What do you know him as? Force. What? Force. Now you can tell the jury. Where was it? This car was traveling at about six o'clock in the morning on June 1st of 1989 on Baychester Avenue. Did there come a time withdrawn? Do you know a person by the name of Fat Cat? What page was that? 85. So make sure I don't Sometimes I grab a page and it's like two pages. I don't know that I don't know him personally. I heard of him. Okay. Did there come a time when you saw this person, Fat Cat? Yes. And were you in the car at that time? Is that correct? Yes. What happened when you saw this person, Fat Cat? I seen him running. Okay. Were you still in the car at this time? Yes. And did you see force and bandit? Objection. Sustained. Don't lead. Pause for a second. Leading is basically what, what you're doing is you're trying to steer the witness in a direction that you're going. And what happens is the 
prosecution had meetings with him and they talked. So he knew the testimony that he was trying to elicit from him. So he was trying to just guide him to get to certain points so he could make the testimony as brief as possible. Okay, tell us what happened when Fat Cat was running. He ran around a corner. Was anyone running behind him? Objection. Because my lawyer said objection because it's like, you, you leading. He ain't offer it. Why are you saying was anyone running behind him? But the judge said, I will allow it. Witness, can you repeat, please? Was anyone running behind Fat Cat? John and Dennis were after him. And when you say they went after him, can you describe? So he's trying not to lead them, but like, what do you mean they were after him? Objection, overruled. You said they went after them. Can you describe what you mean by that? They went after him around the corner and I didn't see no more after that. So he's saying, we went after him. So he, he identifies us, puts us going around the corner after him and then, then playing blind. Now before, earlier than six o'clock in the morning, you said that you were in the car with Force, Bandit, and a young lady. Is that correct? Yes. Did you see anything in the car? Objection. Anything in the car? Like, it's very general. The court overruled. Witness, you want to be specific? Well, did you see anything in the car other than the three people you mentioned and yourself? Now, he's trying to lead him by saying, get to the knife. Want to be specific? Yes. Yes. What did you see? What you mean, what did I see? Did you see whether or not Mr. Bunting had anything in his possession at the time? Because the statement said, I had a knife pouch in my hand. Now, so he's trying to get him to say, I had the knife sheath in my hand. Yes. And what you mean when he got out of the car? No, before he got out of the car. No. So he's trying to play dumb. He's trying not to say what he said in the statement. You didn't see anything in his hand? Not. Objection sustained. Okay. Before six o'clock in the morning earlier, did you see him have anything in his possession? A, and his answer, earlier when we came back from where we was going, it was a pouch in the car. And when he sat in the car, he had it in his hand. He picked it up, he was in the car, and he picked it up and he sat down. So now he's trying to serve two masters. He's trying to say that he didn't see it at that time, but earlier he saw it and it was in my hands. So he's putting a pouch in my hands. So he's trying to serve two masters. He's trying to serve the prosecution by putting the pouch in my hands, but not calling it a knife pouch, like he called it, or a sheath. So he's trying to say, well, satisfy that, but he's trying not to say it's a knife. Can you describe what kind of pouch it was? A beige pouch. Could you show us approximately the size? Size of a pencil. Can you hold up your hands? About the size of a pencil. Hold it up a second so I can have the record reflect. The witness is holding his two hands, one above the other, I would say, about this size. What page is that? 88. This is 89. About that size? Yes. Let the record reflect that the witness is holding a pen. Will you stipulate how long that is? Whatever you say. Approximately six, seven inches. Mr. Albert, six, seven inches. All right. Mr. Olson, how long have you known the person who was in the car with you, Force and Bandit, since high school? 
and approximately how many years is that? About two, one and a half, two. Now, the person that you said Johnny, you also had known him to be false. Is that correct? Yes. Do you see that person here in the courtroom? Yes. Could you point him out to the jury? Sitting next to the lawyer. What color shirt? We'll concede that. And then the court says, indicating the defendant. So they conceded that he was pointing me out. Whether he actually used his finger. Okay. Now my lawyer says he's pointing to Johnny Bunting. So they showed that he pointed me out. Now, did there come a time when you drove the vehicle that you were in at one time? Now, let me pause for a second with the pointing out. The pointing out is basically painting a picture in the jury's mind that he's identifying me. Regardless of whether or not he said I did the actual crime, they're putting in the jury that he pointed me out so that when they play their game and they get to the end, they can say, listen, he pointed him out. So that's part of how they put it in the jury's mind that he's been identified. Even if he just pointed me out for the purpose of saying that that is what his name is. Okay. Now, did there come a time when you drove the vehicle that you were in at one time? Yes. And where did you drive the vehicle to? Co-op City. Did there come a time before you got to Co-op City that the defendant got back in the vehicle? Yes. Did you see the defendant get back in the vehicle? Yes. And did you happen to notice his shirt? Anything unusual about his shirt? See, He's leading him. Did you happen to notice the shirt? He didn't say anything. He just said, um, what if anything did you notice when you get in the car? So they already had this conversation about blood being on his shirt. And so, and it's in a statement. So yes, he had blood on his shirt from his nose was bleeding. That wasn't in a statement. He tried to add the nose was bleeding to try to minimize it like okay it's not the deceased blood it's his own blood but if it's his own blood that means he got into altercation or maybe i just run up and down a block and my nose just start bleeding blood was on his shirt yes the nose mr albert and his nose was bleeding judge i object to the district attorney repeating what he said what the witness said unless he repeats the whole thing i have no further questions you may cross now, cross-examination is the opposing party's attorney. And in this case, it's the defense by Mr. Albert. See, Alston is the name of the witness. The people is who he's testifying for. And cross is the examination. Cross-examination. Good afternoon, Mr. Alston. Good afternoon. Were you subpoenaed to come to court this, morning, this afternoon, Mr. Austin, did you get a paper to come to court this afternoon? I got a paper Wednesday. I came Wednesday. I got a paper again from the DA on Wednesday to come back Thursday. And then a paper Thursday to come back today. Had you spoken to the district attorney before you came to court these three times that you got the paper? Every day, yes. Now, he spoke to the DA every day because they were prepping his testimony. They were going over his statements and saying, listen, this is what you said. They're refreshing your memory to what you said. So I'm going to question you and I'm questioning you along the lines of what you said. For those of you who've never been in criminal proceedings, this may sound foreign to you, but... It makes a lot of sense because a lot of people who've never been in a criminal proceeding, they may have watched Law and Order or several other legal TV shows and movies where this makes sense. Every day, yes. And did you tell the district attorney that you were a friend of Johnny Bunting? Did you tell him that? I told him I know him from school. And did you tell him more or less 
what you just testified to now? Be specific. Did you tell him anything more or less than what you testified to now? No, I don't think so. So he's basically admitting that what he testified to now is not the same thing that he told the DA. So he was trying to switch it up. He was trying, but he was still damaging. Now, how many times would you say that you spoke to Mr. Kelly? Mr. Kelly is the gentleman over here, the district attorney. That was page 91, going to page 92. I spoke to him on Wednesday, yes, for about, I'd say an hour, half an hour. And I spoke to him on Thursday and I came out, I, I came at about 9.30 and I left about 11, 12. And I came around 10 something and I'm here and I spoke to him up to now. And did you tell him that you were a friend of Johnny Bunting? Yes. At any time, did you receive any threats from Mr. Kelly? No, no personal threats, no. Did he say anything to you about perjury? Did he mention to you about perjury? Yes. What did he say to you about perjury? If I lie and change my testimony or change my statement that I will be arrested for perjury. And did that frighten you? Yes. You know what perjury is. Yes. Objection. Ooh. And that was 92. So we're going to 93. Do you know that is a crime? Yes, I do. You know it's a serious crime? Yes, I do. And when you are talking about the statement, are you talking about a statement that you gave to Mr. Kelly or a statement that you gave to somebody else? Statement that I gave to the 47th precinct. And do you remember who you gave that statement to? A cop. I don't know his name. Was it a detective? Yes. Was it Detective Maloney? Yes. Did you tell Detective Maloney that the night before you had gone with Johnny Bunting and a young lady to a motel? Did you tell him that? Yes, I did. Did you read the statement that the detective showed you? Yes, I have. Did you read it? Yes. And he didn't write down the part that he was, that was 93. So, 94 in the motel. Well, let's talk about it now. Now, you mentioned Johnny Bunting's car and you said it was blue Honda. Is that correct? Yes. Tell me, was it only blue? Blue and white. Well, how would you describe that car? I mean, insofar as the white is concerned, where was the white? on the car, on the bumper and on the side. So this is not an entirely blue car. It was blue and white car, is that right? Yes. Was there a lot of white on the bumper and on the side of the car? The whole bumper was white. There is a lot of whiteness there was. And the right and the night before you were in the car with Johnny, is that correct? Yes. And a young lady? Yes. And did Johnny tell you he wanted to go to a 95 motel with this young lady? Objection. Sustained. Well, you tell me what happened that evening before June 1st when you were in the car with Johnny Bunting and a young lady. Objection. Sustained. Did there come a time that Johnny Bunting and this young lady left you at the motel? Yes, his grandmother, him and his grandmother had an argument and she put him out. And he didn't have a place to stay and I had money so I offered him money for him to stay in the hotel. And him and the young lady stayed there that night. Now this was supposed to be my alibi. He was supposed to stay this, say this, and that'd be my alibi.
but it didn't go all that. He either had me coming from the motel. You're supposed to say that this was it. I never saw him again. And when you say you offered him money to pay for the motel, in fact, you laid out the money for the motel. Isn't that correct? Yes. And I paid for the room. What? I paid for the room myself. I know that. That's what I'm asking. You? Yes. And you paid for the room and Johnny left you the... Page 96. Car. Is that correct? Yes. And you drove the car away. Isn't that correct? Yes. Objection. Come up, please. We're upon, at this time, a conference was held at the bench, off the record, and out of the presence of the hearing of the jury. Among the court, Mr. Kelly and Mr. Albert, after which the following proceedings took place. Whereupon, at this time, a conference was held in the Robin Room on the record, but out of the presence of the hearing and hearing of the jury. Among the court, Mr. Kelly and Mr. Albert, at which the following proceedings took place. The court, I called both sides for bench conference because Mr. Albert was questioning this witness about an incident apparently the night before June 5th, June 5th about a hotel and a girl and Mr. Kelly objected. And I asked Mr. Albert, is this leading to something? It goes to credibility. Yes, because the next day, Judge, 97, Bunting, Johnny Bunting was not in the car the next day. So that's what he was leading to, me not being in the car. But that was for June 1st. So this somehow, this got twisted with him doing his version of the exam cross-examination. And the judge intervened and knocked everything off kilter, but he had already said I was there. So he didn't, he didn't flip down. Johnny Bunting was not in the car the next day. The co-defendant, if you remember Jackson, was in the car with Mr. Austin and Mr. Jackson was driving the car and Johnny was not there. The court, if that's where you're going, with all due respect, what Mr. Albert is referring to, we're talking about June 6th, the day of Jackson's arrest. And I'm talking about June 1st. And he is talking about the night before June 1st. And this has nothing to do with it. And I moved to strike. Court, I'm sorry. Are you talking about the night of June, I asked him about June 1st. That's right. First is the, might, the night before the incident. That's correct. You can ask questions if it's leading to the fact that Bunting wasn't there. That's correct. But what Mr. Albert just said was the next day Jackson was arrested and I made a mistake. I meant June at 97 so I gotta go to 98 these pages kind of thick. this is 50 was arrested I had to get ready for another appearance but we're at 98 so I'm gonna continue from 98 Peace.